You are about to listen to the Never Daily Podcast. This is the biggest thing since the Zaproda film. So many questions. I don't have any answers. But please, please don't stop listening to the Never Daily Podcast. Welcome to the Never Daily Podcast, a podcast that takes a look at this month's hottest children's books. Who's in? Who's out? Can children are no match for fire hold its ranking as king of the stack for the 12th day in a row? We'll find out on this episode of the Never Daily Podcast. Is that the androgynous button on your... I made, I made it today. That's I just the most... used a voice changer and like messed around a little bit. And... I call her Janice. <laughs> it's pretty fun. I mean... it Sounds like somebody mid Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds, uh, you know, right in the middle there. <laughs> Excuse me, what? I... Like, if you talk to that voice on yeah. the phone, yeah. if I did, I would not no, use sir, ma'am. Can't. No, 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 no. Full of judgment and indignation, though. I mean, this voice is. You can do a lot with it. Hi, hey, I was just calling because we asked for extra cheese on the pizza, and we ended up getting what I... I make a lot of pizzas. The only reason I ordered from you this time was because I didn't have enough time with all the stuff yeah. and I needed extra and you did it wrong. Now do the same thing you just did, but in your normal voice and say buffalo <laughs> sauce. <laughs> wow. I just realized I'm a Karen. A super giant Karen. Mm. Hey, I want I I, I uh, sometimes curiosity kills the cat, and I typed in YouTube yesterday, and I was like, I wonder if there's anything. Most of the time, it's cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's true. I think this. I think the phrase might have come along before there was a before there were cars. Even then, it was wolves. Wolves killed the cat. Not quite the same ring to it. <laughs> I don't know if it was like this in, when you were growing up, but when in Kentucky, this is for all Southern kids, when their animal, animal bites the dust, um, your parents just say it ran off with the wolves. Yeah. <laughs> and oftentimes, <laughs> that's not wrong, but what they're leaving out is it technically ran off with the wolves because it was in their mouth. Um, that's the thing is your, your cats and dogs in country settings getting killed by, yeah. you know, yeah, every, every coyote. kid has a, that visual in their head that, that of, of a helpless animal being carted off in the mouth of a predator at some point when you live in the country. And that's a good segue into Michael Jackson. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, because <laughs> that's a heavy talk. I typed in YouTube, and as I often do, I was like, wait, YouTube? That sounds like Jewtube. I wonder if Jewtube.com is anything. I went to Jewtube.com, like Jew, like Jewish people, Jewtube.com. Yeah. It's a total thing. Right. It is a total thing. Jewtube.com. Uh, they're, they have TV series, Incognito. They have TV series on YouTube, the skinny hamburger hummus, hip hop in the Holy land, Yid life crisis series, season one and season two, juvangelist bubble of please. Um, it's a, it's a whole thing. Like it's, it, and it's all positive. It's, you know, pro Jew. Oh yeah, this isn't even like, no, it's, it's, very, it's, it's a pot. It's, this is like Jewish. Yeah, there, there were, the, um, this is Jack awesome. Black sings uh, like a Hanukkah song. I want to say on it somewhere. I mean, there's a yeah, a lot of fish. There, Jack Black performs the prayer for Hanukkah. Like you can watch Jack Black like sing a whole Hanukkah song. I was I was like, wow, that's fun. I mean, you know, that's cool. It's cool. If you want to 
want a little taste of the Judaism this holiday season? I mean, I think we're all getting a we're getting a pretty good taste of it right now. <laughs> Heaping dose of Judaism. Oh, uh, boy. More so than at any point in the history, aside from maybe the 40s. Oh. Well, if you want a heaping helping of positive Judaism, we'll go with that. Jewtube.com. This, this episode's brought to you by Jewtube.com. And by Michael Jackson. The, the interesting thing about the, uh, the war going on right now is like... My probably my favorite thing about the war, um, if you can have a, can you? I don't real? know if yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> my favorite, uh, the good, um, one point. Uh, uh, interesting thing there about the war is because it's a holy war, and because we've been you know for for fifteen years calling. Everyone and everything, either an Islamophobe or uh, anti-Semitic or whatever. Uh, the interesting thing is now you have to, like, because of social media, pick a side. And no matter your political leanings, mm -hmm. it's a double-edged sword. And that makes me laugh because it's like if you side with Hamas, not only are you supporting terrorists, but, like, you're also kind of anti-Semitic. Uh, yeah. Right? But if you support Israel, it's like um, not only you're supporting Zionism, but you're also kind of Islamophobic. So it's like pick yeah. your poison. Well, it is weird. We've been watching Band of Brothers uh, on TV, and I love it so much. Um, I said last night, I said, it's interesting how they lived in a time when monsters were identified as such. And, you know, we were like, oh, there's the monster. And the world goes, let's get him. <laughs> you know, nowadays, there's literal terrorist organizations that you can say, well, that's a terrorist organization. But there's somebody right there to say, well, actually, you're an asshole. <laughs> you're like, hang on, wait, they all of the checks bo boxes are checked for terrorist organization. Well, actually, let's talk about how Israel's done things. You know, like there's no there's no black and white anymore. Like no. Like you we couldn't even say Islamic extremists. We couldn't use that as a term. Like in the 40s, the 30s and 40s, that would have been pegged as like let's let's take care of this. Let's handle cuz not even the Islamic faith wants Islamic extremists. You know what I mean? But now we 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 can't we can't we can't seem to get on the same page with who's who's actually a bad guy. And it sucks. So honestly, what I think it does, I think everybody is a bad guy in that situation. When you can't think of who's the bad guy, yeah, yeah, well, it's that. It's yeah. I mean, I think anybody fighting a holy war, neither side is in the right. Yeah. So. And this is the first, like, re I think, real, honest to God, like, holy war in our lifetime. Like, a war, a legitimate, serious war where both sides are motivated for religious reasons. Uh, we, you, we've, we've had other ones that, that, for Americans, don't matter. That have been really significant. That's what I, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the first big time war, like it, like the NFL, all the other ones were, you know, it's like college level. Yeah. 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 It, it, they're also really hard for us to process because religion in particular has become icky here. And so talking about it at all, like we don't know how to talk about anything with regard to religion. And suddenly, you know, we're all experts on, the Islamic faith or Hamas or Israel. Like we read a bunch of headlines and suddenly people who have never talked about religion before uh, being us and the generations yeah. that are alive right now, suddenly we're full. We're just, you know, cornucopias of knowledge on, on religious. And it's good you bring that up because I'm a fucking idiot and I don't know anything about much, 
except for like maybe horror movies. And that knowledge doesn't translate well to a holy war between Israel and Palestine. No. For being honest. No. I mean, which Jasons Kane Hodder played in the Friday the 13th franchise? I don't bring a lot to the political conversation. You know what yeah. I'm like? <laughs> I, I, um, I, I, I follow, t- I, when it comes to religious conflict, I follow two, two philosophies. One philosophy is mm. if you're being put upon or, a, or the war is brought to you, the conflict is brought to you, I believe whoever your God is, if, the, if that God's an active God and, you know, things are, you know, I think you'll be helped. And I think it's, it's honorable to defend yourself if, if you have been put upon. If you're going and seeking the war, I don't think you're going to get any help from your, your, your God or your spirit, unless your religion denotes that that's part and parcel to your gods. <laughs> like, like the, like the Vikings, you know, they were like, no, this is like games for the gods. They like to watch us go and rape and pillage. This is part of the gig, you know? And we've talked about this before, but I, I really hope that when we die and South Park kind of covered this, I really hope that when we die, like they just wait for a couple, like they have like a group of 200, right? They get everybody into a room wherever the afterlife is. Uh, They have you file in and they're like, all right, that's 200. Have them start waiting at the door. And they have a guy up front and he's like, all right. (laughs) It was the Buddhist. Buddhist. Can I get the... uh, (laughs) If you're a Buddhist, raise your hand. You were right. <laughs> we're gonna need you guys to file off to the. There's a door on the right there. You'll you'll see the flight of stairs. It goes up. All the rest of you. There's an elevator, and it only has one button. So go ahead and file on there. Can I get the next two hundred <laughs> in here? It's the Buddhists, raise your hand if you were. Yeah, we don't want to mention. Like, what if it was that cut and dry in the afterlife? We definitely don't want to mention how South it Park the Mormons- said that it ended, though. If we don't want to mention that. <laughs> It was the Mormons. <laughs> and I was like, what? It was the atheists. <laughs> then what are we yeah. doing here? Yeah, suddenly they're n- the <laughs> Satan's not there anymore. So interesting that you'd mentioned that, though, about religious wars going on. Uh, there's actually, so there's this, there's this really like ridiculously data-intensive website called ArcGIS. And like, a majority of the the places where you've gone on a website, if it's not Google Maps that's showing you like maps and directions on a website, like this is where we're located, ArcGIS is the fundamental layer for creating maps, and and ArcGIS is used to, to map know. things Arc, with data. So like you could put political data into it, it would map out like that's how they do like. District mapping in a state. ArcGIS is used to 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 show the breakdown. So ArcGIS has this this uh, series called Story Maps, and um, there's actually six, seven, eight, nine, nine religious wars going on right now in the world. Uh, everything from Oh, yeah. I mean, at any point in history, there's been a religious war going on. I'm saying, like, this is the first big league, like, religious war in our lifetime. Well, it's, it's, that's the funny thing. This is I mean, the some, first, like, Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao. Armenia, the Armenian like, genocide. Religious war. It's pretty rough. <laughs> pretty. <laughs> <laughs> ah. um, you know, interesting. Uh, some people would call actually the 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 orthodox split between russia and ukraine many people call the russia ukraine conflict a religious war um yeah but i think that's more of a gray <laughs> you're really trying to make this stick aren't you just it's going <laughs> to what about the bosnians? yeah the bosnians rwanda no, I didn't. I meant like that whole area is literally gray. Have you ever seen a movie filmed in Russia? The Myanmar conflict. Of- <laughs> <laughs> any movie, like, or any James Bond, or like the second they go to like Russia, 
blah 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 blah. The 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 tones are always gray. Yeah, and, it's true. Like, so I think one thing sad. that you you do have a point on when it comes to that is that those two religions in particular are universal. What? How did I get balloons? Why do you have balloons? That's a perfect time. We're talking about holy war. Let's. What just happened? Did I do something with my hand? You have your hand gestures turned on. Do a thumbs up. Hey. How? <laughs> well, what did I do for balloons? Make an O face. What if my O face was this? <laughs> anyway, what? So the one thing. Do that again. Let me see that O face again. happen. No, the one you were just no, doing. No, you're not. <laughs> okay, I'll make it. I don't know if it took it. Okay. Four, three, two, one. <sighs> Got it. That hurt. A lot went into that. No wonder you didn't lose your virginity until you I were like I just lost my virginity right now. I'm making that face. That's how this... Wow. <laughs> There he's and he's gone. Can you guys still hear me? Off yeah, is he's gone frozen. if you're the listener. Uh what happened is Oh and just like that. Bada being this is the Never Daily Podcast and things are going as usual. I'm your host, Kent Chungus. With me today is Chase Ellerman. How you doing, Chase? Got to turn my mic on. I'm doing good. Doing good. How was your Thanksgiving? It's pretty good. I drove for like all total, like almost 40 hours, over 2,000 miles. So spent a lot of time on the road. That's how you want to spend your Thanksgiving? Yep. Out there on the road. Just what about drive. you, Jess? I'm also joined by Jess here, and she's got an uh, interesting tidbit about casserole. <laughs> I don't like casserole. It's the stuffing, man. <laughs> it's where it's at. Before we started recording, uh, we were just talking, and we were uh, each talking about our favorite Thanksgiving dish, and we all came to agreement, even Op, who's not here right now, that dressing is where it's at. Chase, what's the deal with dressing? Dressing just has everything that I love, which is carbs. Lots of right. carbs in it. Yeah, and I'll be honest, just I don't even delicious. know what's in dressing. It's bread. Bread. That explains it. That, ex that makes sense. And uh, Op lost his internet. Oh, okay. Let's see. Got a message. Good episode we've got here today. This is the best episode we've probably ever done. So I can get my pamphlet out. It well, would be the worst. <laughs> the first text that he sent said that he lost interest, which is probably the real reason why he's not here. Oh, okay. <laughs> to be honest, I'd rather read your pamphlet than Ops. <laughs> True. Um, I guess the three of us can just carry on then. So you guys had a good Thanksgiving? It was pretty good. It was good. We didn't do the traditional Thanksgiving. We did uh, ribeyes instead. Right. Because nobody very wanted upper to. upper class Thanksgiving. Nobody wanted to cook the whole, the whole spiel, the whole kit and caboodle. Do you hear what I'm hearing, Kent? He was on a yacht last month. Yeah, right? This... Not me. You were on a yacht. Not his yacht, but... It's not mine. I have nothing to yeah, do Yeah, but it. it was like a James Bond villain yacht. That is true. The guy who originally owned that boat did go to jail for a pyramid scheme. I thought you were going to say child trafficking, but because uh, it's definitely a child trafficking yacht. But um, you had ribeyes and dressing? No, we didn't actually have any dressing. We just did ribeyes and mashed potatoes and salad. 
and King's Hawaiian rolls because those are delicious. Oh, that's all you need. Yeah. That's all you need. I like taking those King's Hawaiian rolls and cutting them and throwing some ham and cheese on it and baking it. Mm-hmm. That's so good. Fucking forget about it. How was your Thanksgiving, Kent? Oh, I just spent most of it, honestly. I spent most of it pooping. <laughs> that's why I left because I already knew. <laughs> So Thanksgiving is like probably my favorite holiday of the year. I look forward to it every year, but uh, because maybe I was a bad person in another life or maybe even in this one, um, the night before Thanksgiving, my belly started doing this like, you know, like the noise a dog makes when it like, (laughs) I was like, oh, that's not good. I'll forget about that, though, because I'm going to get dressing tomorrow. And then it turns out I had a stomach bug all of Thanksgiving and didn't get to enjoy any of it and spent most of the time um, not putting solids into my mouth, but entering, exiting liquids from my bottom. (laughs) Was it one of those fun times where your legs go numb on the toilet because you're just... Basically well, that's every time I use the bathroom because I'm done in three minutes and then there's an hour and a half where I'm on, you know, watching beheading videos or... Or you're watching dick videos that Jess sends you. Yeah, Jess, uh, if you're the listener, you you did, you missed it. Uh, behind the seats, Jess has been sending me on Instagram uh, videos of dudes with massive cocks and gray sweats. It's her new favorite thing to send me. And I don't know why, but these fellas really have almost a disability. That um, one almost touched his knee. <laughs> yeah, it's not even. I'm not even jealous. No, I it's wouldn't even terrifying. want something like that. It's absolutely terrifying. Um, and for the list for and I, and I know that um, our 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 viewers can't see this, but we got people in the back door. So I'm not even going to turn it on again. Never mind. It's just a nope, dude in don't. gray sweatpants. <laughs> normal size, not sweatpants. Gray sweat shorts. Normal size sweatshorts, the head of it is almost coming out the bottom of them, though. Yeah. And I think Jess may have accidentally sent sent it to me in a, I don't know what she was doing over there. I think she was double clicking more than one mouse. So. (laughs) Gross. So that's me and Jess's new thing. She sends me videos of dudes with massive penises on Instagram, and I send her videos of Britney Spears dancing. In my defense, it's because of the soft dick conversation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that, too. I I don't know that I believe that he, obviously in the video, he's pretending like it's soft, but there's definitely some rubbing before he turned the record button on, some warming up. Pulling, yeah. maybe a little bit of like slinging, like shaking it. Some helicoptering. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nope. Opposite Nobody it. rolls out of bed like that. No. Um, upset that his internet is down in the entire neighborhood. Oh, okay. So. Well, we can finish this episode just right. like this then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What'd you bring today? Because you're the only one. So, yeah, uh, I want to, th- <laughs> what a goddamn train wreck. I want to thank uh, Nels Hewson, one of our listeners, Nels Hewson, for this one. Last night while I was thinking, like, what am I going to talk about on the Never Daily with Op tomorrow? And, like, what as I was Googling, like, what's an interesting story to talk about? Uh, one of the listeners named Nels Hewson sent me this. And he was like, you should talk about, like strange murder weapons that people have used. And I was like, that's That's a a great idea. idea. And he sent me a few recommendations and it turns out like it's the most, it's the most fun ever in like a weird, you know, fucking your cousin kind of way. Like uh, it's dark, but it's a good time. And the first one, first odd murder weapon a man named Albin Ludwig committed a murder with a potato masher. A potato masher. And I feel like this goes with our Thanksgiving theme that, that we were talking about 
Very That's why fitting. I wanted, <laughs> yeah. Good segue. Thanksgiving. We were talking about the potato masher. Albert Ludwig, it says, was furious because he had caught his wife, Cecilia, with other men before. So he's dating this whore. She's out sleeping around and doing God knows what. And so he follows her one evening. This is in 1906, by the way. And I think we probably assume so, considering I don't even know what a t- potato masher looks like. It has like the, it's like a handle that goes down oh, in two yeah, parts. And then it has like a zigzag kind of loop de loop. I don't know. Does that make the sense? Yeah, just kind of. Just a plate with holes in it, though, like drilled holes right. in it. It looks like it would be really hard to murder somebody with this thing. Not a lot of weight to it. Not a lot of weight. Mm-hmm. It would probably break pretty easily. Yeah. But in but on that, this was 1906. Things were built diff, like things were built to last. You only had one potato masher your whole life. It was probably like a stick with a big rock on the end. <laughs> yeah. Or it was just cast iron. Oh yeah. It was just a so just a just a, a square block of steel. A literal potato masher. So, Albin, he caught his old slut bag of a wife sleeping around. He followed her around one evening in 1906 and caught her with this other man. And that naturally, as it would with any marriage, started some fighting. I know me and my wife, if I caught her sleeping with a man, oh, boy, would we have a talk that night, a heated discussion. That would be an awkward few days, at the very least, t- passing each other in the hallway. You know, just like, I'm still mad at you. I'm going to need a few days. Uh, you better not do that again. <laughs> I swear to God, if you suck another guy's dick. Albert knocked Cecilia the next day, unconscious with the potato masher. And, you know, I know this might sound, maybe I was a little misleading here. He did kill her with, technically, the the potato masher was more of a an accessory to the motor, I would say. Because he, although he didn't knock her unconscious with the potato masher, afterwards he doused her with flammable liquid and then lit her on fire. So, it's like, it was, was, it was the four potato masher the really murder. the murder weapon, you know. At his trial, he did claim self-defense. Would he spill the gasoline on her? (laughs) I wish I was making that up. I'm not. But uh, he was convicted of second-degree murder. Well, first-degree murder is premeditated, right? I, I, I don't know that you could prove that this is premeditated. Nonetheless... That was Albert Ludwin, the murder with the potato masher. And where do potatoes, mashed potatoes rate on your Thanksgiving plate list? Jess, first. It'd like, probably be second. How important? Second nest. Second? Next, yeah. I mean, good I, mashed potatoes. There's nothing worse than biting into mashed potatoes and they're really bad. Or fake. Like what? What? What constitutes bad mashed? Lumpy? No, fake mashed potatoes. Okay, I agree with that because I kind of like the lumpy sometimes. What about where do you stand on skins? Yeah, that's and fine. Potatoes? I love it too. Yeah. What about you, Chase? It's probably number three for me. Probably goes stuffing, then rolls. Okay, oh. I can respect oh. those for me. I can respect that. I can, I can re- respect. That. I take that back. A good roll. But no, I, I, I'm 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 still second with the potatoes, but I do respect the rolls being second. Basically, it's all this, it's all this starch. Yeah, yeah, just, just anything with carbohydrates in it. And we were talking before about, and I don't know if this is a country countrywide thing, but we all four agreed uh, when Op was a part of 1159 Media that there's nothing better. <laughs> Than 
a Thanksgiving sandwich two days after Thanksgiving. You pull all the leftovers out of the out of the fridge and take a piece of white bread and throw some mashed potatoes and dressing and turkey on it and just slap another. It's almost better than Thanksgiving itself. It is. But so two questions. What about the cranberry? OK, I wasn't going to bring it up. You brought it up. You want to you want to throw a negative We'll take the conversation into a negative place if you want. I was trying to stay positive because it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> I am not on the cranberry train. Is that because it comes out of a can every time? That's not, I'm not opposed to, I love spam. I like beanie weenies as next as the, as the next guy. But it's the sweet and savory thing I'm not a fan of. Oh, I like to keep that's my, right. You don't like the mix. I like both of them, but I like to keep them separated so everybody gets along. Chase, are you a sweet and savory? Uh, it depends. Yeah, I'd say that I'll I'll eat s- sweet and savory at the same time, but yeah, I don't think I'm against it. Like there's some, like if you ever had like sweet pulled pork, like that stuff's pretty good. Yeah. If you were a cannibal, And you had to pick two races, one where you assumed they would be sweet and the other one you assumed they would be savory. What races would you eat? I don't know why, but f- like the first race that came to my mind with sweet was uh, Polynesians. Oh, that's a great. And I was going to go black for savory. Yeah. I want someone that's had like seasoning in their life, not <laughs> thinks ketchup spicy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not for me because, as I said, I don't like combining sweet and savory, but I feel like for the average person, like a black calf would pair well with, like, some Polynesian backstrap. I don't think that's how it works. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, we got to move back on. What's your second one? (laughs) Second one, Deborah Hewitt. And I'm going to give you each... One guess to try to figure out what Deborah Hewitt committed a murder with. And I'm not going to give you any guesses because you're not going to guess it. Not in a million years, but it's going to be fun to try. What about you, Jess? A hair dryer. No. Chase? Uh, I'm going to say a toilet seat cover. No, it turns out it was a Polynesian, which is wild. Deborah Hewitt, somehow in January of 2010, pulled off a murder with her own prosthetic leg. That's kind of iconic. I mean... In January of 2010, she got her nickname, uh, her nickname was Angel, but after this murder, she was called the Angel of Death. She was convicted in 2010 for killing her boyfriend in which she stomped him, his name was Dwayne Ball, with her prosthetic leg and then took it off and beat him in the head to death with it. Oh. And I don't know if, like, track, a prosthetic leg, gives you an, an advantage in trying to attempt a murder. Um, like, I know in track, it's not fair to have a um, somebody with two legs compete with somebody with fake legs because they have such, like, people with fake legs that have those, like, sprinting legs, those motherfuckers can move. <laughs> and if their girlfriend's behind a door, it turns out they can also shoot. <laughs> Back to Deborah Hewitt. So she killed 
Dwayne Ball with this prosthetic leg and his decomposing body, he was 47 years old, was found about six weeks later in Lafayette Parish. She was uh, convicted of second-degree murder, which carries a mandatory life sentence. Do you think they gave her a new leg? <laughs> I mean, technically, her old one was still fine. It's probably pretty beat up. Do you think they made her take evidence? it off here in court as Exhibit A? <laughs> Please identify the murder weapon. She just pushes her chair back and slaps her leg up on the table. <laughs> They're so stupid. Next up is Nora Peterson, and this murder weapon is a Southern favorite uh, where she committed a murder in August of August 18th of 2012 with a frying pan. That's classic. And as a fella, and maybe Chase, you can relate to this as a fella who has washed my wife's frying pan with dish soap. Um, I can see a man being murdered with a frying pan after my seeing my wife's reaction. Um, I don't get the hype about frying pans. It's more maintenance than a Cadillac CTS. Is it a cast iron? Is that why? It's a cast iron frying pan. Yeah. Cast iron. I washed it one time the way you would wash all the other ditches and put it on the dryer. And if you saw my wife's reaction, you would think she just caught me trying to drown our kids in a bathtub can't say I haven't reacted the same way. <laughs> Why do you want a cooking device that is so high maintenance? I won't even cook in it because it's, I just don't get it. She's like, did you season it? After I use it, like season it. It's. What is the draw of a, of a cast iron? Please, Jess, I'm, I'm curious as to why you can't, you guys. Well, I mean, some people over. argue that it's like the flavor, you know, it's been worn and used. And my mom has a cast iron from 40 years ago and she swears by it. I personally like to put things in the dishwasher. So I only use it when I like make steak inside or something like that specific. I, I can agree with it. It does make a nice steak. Or I iron. bake in a cast iron, like I'll bake in a cast iron pan, like put a roast in the one with the lid on it, like a Dutch oven yeah. style. And it yeah. just makes a difference. I don't know. Maybe it's nostalgic, too, because. It is very like it does feel. For me, I know this is I know it's used all around the United States, but for me, it feels southern for some like. Yeah. I remember my grandma in her little country house always making gravy in her 500-year-old cast iron frying pan. Yes. And it's, uh, like Chris has said in the back door, good cornbread. Yeah, I will not make cornbread in anything but my cast iron pan. What about you, Chase? Do you have any? This is a deep. This is the worst. I, I, the, hated, the I hated when we were talking about the Holy War because I thought this is so unimportant. Kent. <laughs> the Gaza Strip, whenever he's talking about the Gaza, like, this is so irrelevant to everything. I'm glad that we're on cast iron um, frying pans. Chase, you got any... What's the... Do -do 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 -do. I'm going to take it to you, Chase. What's the deal with cast iron frying pans? Well, I have some cast iron, I ha but we have a glass top right now, and so they don't really... Yeah. Work as well on a glass top, so we they're just in storage. But in because I grew up in the Southwest, cast iron is also really big in the Southwest. Like with cowboy cooking, and they like Dutch ovens, cast iron Dutch ovens. Like if you know how to you cook with one of those, fire. like that that food is you can bake in them, like just with a fire. Yeah. So you just put the coals on top, and you can bake bread in them. You can do all sorts of stuff in them. But if you have like good Dutch oven potatoes, like for some reason like or beans like dutch oven beans too like there's just like extra so much more 
flavor for some like because of all the fats that of all the previous meals are like all rendered down and you get that extra flavor in there and i don't know it just tastes good but they are a pain in the ass to maintain yeah and speaking of dutch ovens um after eating thanksgiving or trying to in the sickness you dutch ovened your wife didn't you yeah all not just (laughs) poor heaven oh on August 18th of 2012, Nora Peterson uh, pleaded guilty to killing her boyfriend with a frying pan. She was 37 years old. Uh, his name was Michael Mills Carrick, 55-year-old. They got into an argument in their apartment. And during the argument, Nora uh, grabbed a, a cast iron frying pan and struck him several times on the head. The neighbors called 911 and Mills Carrick was pronounced dead at the hospital. Uh, Peterson agreed to a sentence of 22 years in jail in exchange for a guilty plea to first-degree murder. 22 years. Not a lot for first-degree murder. Not really. When the other lady got life for a second. Yeah. The, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to our justice system at all. It's like they have a, a little ticker and they just... Ten and years. if you're black, the portions are sec- sectioned out differently. <laughs> it's horribly true that there's no rhyme or reason. Daniel Kovarbich. And this one's probably my favorite. No, it's not. The next one's my favorite, but this is definitely my second favorite. Daniel Karvarbich was able to successfully pull off a murder a few years ago on January 22nd with a pickle jar. (laughs) And this is like Chronicles of Riddick. Honestly, I don't know if you remember that scene where Riddick kills a guy. I think it's like with a fork or something. And the group is standing there looking at him. He said he sets the Whatever it was, let's say it was a fork, he sets it on a ledge and then looks at him, and then one of them tries to attack, he kills the guy with a fork, and then he takes a cup and he sets it on the ledge and looks at him again. Uh, That's kind of what this feels like. It says, and according, from what I read, Daniel here, uh, he was 16 years old when he did this murder. He killed his abuser. So the man he killed was 55-year-old Dwayne Hurley. Like I said, the teenager killed this man uh, with a pickle jar and then afterwards stabbed him more than 50 times with a kitchen knife. And I can definitely believe that this is probably his abuser because that seems like an act of rage. You know, you stab a dead body 50 times. This happened in North Ridgeville. Kovarbich didn't have any defensive wounds and only a slight cut on the bridge of his nose. And said, quote, I will not say what had occurred. Says he had a history of trouble at schools he attended, including expulsions and withdrawals. The teen also had several juvenile juvenile delinquency problems, including possession of a knife similar to the one used to kill Hurley. He was believed to be. He was believed to be in Hurley's Ronald Drive, North Ridgeville home when Hurley was stabbed to death. Kovarbich told nursing staff at St. John that he had stabbed Hurley in self-defense. Um, I don't know where this side note came that he had killed his abuser. There's probably more to this story than what, well, obviously, with these Never Dailies, I'm not doing a deep dive into this stuff. But um, from what I'm reading here, the guy was abusive. To, like, this is his abuser. So, Donna Lang. This one's my favorite. What do you think Donna Lang killed her her victim with? Chase. A Polynesian. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a hint. There were... <laughs> no, not a Polynesian. Don't be ridiculous. There were two of them. I'll give you a hint. The silent treatment. No, two Africans. Which is... Strangely enough, odder than Polynesians. No, he didn't kill, didn't commit murder with two Africans. What did, what do you think it was, Jess? 
Um, shoes? No. Donna Lang in 2013 successfully pulled off a murder with her tits. That's impressive. What? Did she smother them? Yes. What an what an amazing way to die. Right? I mean, if Sign I have to pick up. a way, that's the way I want to go. At least you're going to die happy. I mean, even at uh, like a 16-year-old Kent that maybe went a few weeks without uh, having a release may have would have volunteered for suicide, even if I wasn't suicidal, just to get some tits in my like. That's probably, if you ask this fella, he was 51 years old. Everett Washington in 2013, Donna Lang, a 50-year-old Everett woman, is accused of smothering her 51-year-old boyfriend to death by lying on his face. Lang lived in the mobile home with the victim. Witnesses at the home Saturday said there were two incidents in which they, were, they heard the couple arguing that night. In one, they reportedly saw Lang throw down her boyfriend in the back of the mobile home and the victim was heard telling Lane to get off of him. Witnesses said Lane had her chest on the victim's face. And if I was this fella, I'd start a whole lot more fights. I would just be starting shit left and right. You better not put your titties in my face. You better not. I'm going to go out and get drunk tonight and come and stay out as late as I want. You better be awake when I get up because we're going to argue. Did she get convicted of first degree? Does it say? I don't know. This has been the Never Daily Podcast. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have that information. <laughs> if you're still listening, thanks for hanging on. But <laughs> I feel like the only other person that could pull off a murder with their appendage would be that fellow that you sent me. Uh, that video on Instagram up. <laughs> the strangulation. <laughs> yeah, she smothered him to death with her boots. And uh, this has been a shoot from the hip episode of The Never Daily. We had a whole show planned and that went to shit when Op apparently lost his lost interest as he <laughs> text. quote. That's a direct quote from him. He lost interest. In a conversation about innocent people dying in the Gaza Strip. So, I don't know what that says about him, but he lost internet. Interest was a typo. And thank you for joining us, I guess. Yeah. Don't forget to rate and review. <laughs> <laughs>